18 years ago today, Get Rich or Die Trying dropped by the famous 50 Cent. Um, I mean, it absolutely exploded the genre did so much um, in such a short period of time. But guys, before we actually get into the episode, you know, NFR Podcast is trying to connect the world to hip hop. Um, tell your friends about this. Tell everyone about it. We're really trying to push a narrative here and we're trying to, uh, you know, cover hip hop on a bigger scale. But Lou, introduce us into the episode and tell us what we're going to be talking about. Yeah, so we're going to talk about how 50 Cent, you know, changed hip hop with Get Rich or Die Trying and you know how he became the hottest rapper in the game the most talked about rapper in the game and how he kind of revolutionized you know marketing you know marketing a persona and marketing you know an album essentially and his his come up story is absolutely insane because you know everyone knows that he was shot nine times came back had a legendary career by the way the guy that shot him nine times was later killed like i think two weeks later yeah, um, so th- th- there's no news about that <laughs> but who no, knows but who knows what's going on there but anyways it's crazy to see where curtis jackson took it you know he's a legend he is a mogul in our genre and you know take us back to when you know he was starting to make music yeah so he started getting serious with it at 21 years old um, when he met people in the, in the industry who saw talent in him such as Jam Master J who was Run DMC's DJ that was like his first major connect and then he ended up working on an Onyx album and then um, Columbia Records actually signed him to their label and then they threw him off the label after he had gotten shot which was probably the biggest L any record label has ever taken um, but you know Essentially, he got shot nine times and managed to survive and recover fully within five months. And after that, he's like, okay, I'm going to get into shape and I'm going to come back into the game and, you know, be a really aggressive and mean looking persona. He knew that he needed that persona to sell himself, essentially. Absolutely. And you know what? He ended up uh, getting the attention of Eminem. Of course, he stumbled upon one of his mixtapes. Guess who's um, back? Guess who's back. And then after that, he also, um, you know, he also got mainstream attention with How to Rob. Uh, if, if you guys don't know that, that's pre um, Get Rich or Die Trying. It's an absolute classic. That was supposed to be on and his nuts. Power of the Dollar um, album, which was shelved from Columbia, which never came out. Uh, not only that, but a lot of people don't know that 50 Cent probably birthed this whole mixtape game. He's one that, you know, he, he changed made, it. He completely changed it and the whole approach to it. You know, someone that was almost selling it like crack cocaine on the streets and and he was taking you know you know famous rap songs and you know putting covers to them and you know making them even bigger bangers and it was just so impressive um and also we have 50 cent is the future which he did with g unit and so many great songs from there and it was just he was hyping it up he was hyping up get richard die trying and you know when eminem got his hands on guess who's back he immediately invited him to la to meet with dr dre and then not long after signed him to a one million dollar record deal for shady records and that is probably one of the biggest signings of all time it absolutely exploded and uh, we were talking about this in the car earlier how that era of dr dre eminem um and 50 cent was so iconic and they probably did it the best out of anyone else um in that whole decade and it's one of the most iconic times in hip-hop yes. so now we get on to get rich or die trying and, and before we get into that i just want to speak yeah. about something that 50 cent had said when he was talking about you know kind of marketing this album he said the only business model I had was from selling drugs. So that's how I marketed my product. I knew the only way to get into my market is to give out free samples. I had built up clientele before I could see a profit. And that was him speaking kind of what he did with his mixtapes leading up to Get Richard Die Trying, where he had a huge blow up, man. And, you know, as soon as you have those cosigns from Eminem and Dr. Dre, who both served as executive producers, you know that album is going to get a lot of attention. Not only that, but it had the perfect narrative. Drug dealer gets shot nine times and has the biggest um, underdog story of all time. Exactly. People were eating it up. And, you know, it, it kind of raises the question, like, how could have this gone any more perfect? Because, you know, we saw that the commercial success was starting to hit with this album. Um, not only that, but apparently a lot of the production done for Get Rich or Die Trying was supposed to be on the original copy of Detox. And Dr. Dre passed that down to wow. the, you know, the different producers and engineers I didn't know that. that yes that's an actual fact and um the people don't know the type of quality that's on this album because maybe they 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 you know a lot of the new generation hasn't got into it let's say like me and you have because when we were starting to get into hip-hop this was still fresh off like you know still fresh off the market yeah it was stuff. maybe like yeah like seven eight years old it was almost a decade old but it was still yeah. very relevant because you know people are still bumping this album today that's how much replay value it has and you know what's crazy to me is that you know it has over 15 songs on it but every single song slaps it's bangers from front to, to from the beginning to the end man and it has so much cinematic qualities if you look for example at a song like heat which was produced Fire. by Dr. Dre, there's real gun sounds. Like, it was no, like, sound effect. Like, they used real gun sounds 
um, just to add that authenticity and that real feeling to it. Not only that, but a lot of people don't know that Eminem actually had three production credits on this. Yeah. Um, he had Patiently Waiting High All the Time and Don't Push Me. Eminem is a super underrated producer as well. He makes crazy beats. Um, the album sold 12 million copies worldwide. In one year. In one year, making it go diamond in the first year. Not only that, but it put up 872K first week For copies. For a debut album, man? No, wow. it's, that's absolutely crazy. And we know the type of stuff they, you know, the type of stuff that's in this album. It's authentic. It's genuine feelings. It's raw emotions mixed in with that whole West Coast sound, especially, you know, like it, it was because 50 was like that bridging gap between the East Coast from New York and and, and the West Coast sound. And he brought it together and as he, one. And he re revitalized that the whole gangster rap genre yes, and, sir. you know, took hip hop to another level. And, you know, a lot of other people would come to follow into that lane. And, you know, there's 19 songs on this. Every single song, like I said, slaps. There's no skips. On a 19, you know, song album to have zero skips, that's so impressive. And, you know, it kind of became, um, he set out a blueprint of how to sell an image more than the actual music. It's kind of like style over substance, but you have style and substance. It's Yeah, like that whole extra, like extravagant persona, um, being in the press, doing, you know, the marketing stunts. But at the same time, you're putting out some of the best um, material in that decade. And it was just, it was a recipe for that. You know, he knew the marketing game and he knew how to push that product. What would you say is your favorite song? song off of uh, get rich or die trying wow i'd probably say back down okay i would probably say back down um big fan of pimp uh 21 questions in the club you know, like patiently, patiently waiting wankster there's so many different bangers and on then this. you know you get you know storytelling on yeah, many how about men you? What, what do you got what do you got as your number uh shit man um probably many men just because how, how iconic it is and you know the influence that we're seeing with it and speaking of many men um, you know, people are calling it the most influential song of 2020 just because we saw that 21 Savage made a song called Many Men off of Savage Mode 2. And not only that, but Pop Smoke actually also made a song where he interpolates, you know, that hook from 50 Cent. On Got It On Me. Exactly. Not only that, but I think, you know... At, at so we're, we're sorry, but we're, we're seeing that influence... Yeah. You know, almost 20 years later. And that's, that's something that we have to, you know, address and salute 50 for. Absolutely. But guys, let us know what your favorite track on um, Get, Rich, or, Get Rich or Die Trying is. You know, it's it's 18 years now that it's out and, you know, people are still talking, getting hyped. And we're going to do a huge episode for the 20th, man. That's going to be absolutely crazy. 20th anniversary of Get Rich or Die Trying. That's going down in like a fucking capsule. I iconic album. Ooh.